Okay, great. So the, the title of my talk today is The Art of the Story. And what I'm really hoping that you walk away with at the end of this talk is to be a little more purposeful about the story you're creating with your own life. But first, to better understand that, I want to explain to you exactly what I mean by the art of storytelling. Storytelling, by definition, is the conveying of events through words and images, and it often involves embellishment and improvisation. Now, we do this every day. We do it over coffee, we do it at the bar, we do it at the gym, maybe while you're running down the street, even over text messaging and on Facebook. We're sending messages that are creating a narrative about our life. Now, to better understand the art side of storytelling, I want to take a simple event that we might all experience in a given time and place, something as simple as a rainstorm. A rainstorm isn't really artistic until you apply the human expression and creation to the event. That happens twice during the storytelling process. The first time it happens is in the moment of the event. You can choose to sing in the rain, dance in the rain, play in the rain. You could even run or hide or pout. It's really up to you as a human what you're going to do in the moment of the event. The second part of storytelling happens after the event. We interpret the event and apply a meaning of that event to our own lives. We then share that event, to, the story, to other people. Now that's where it becomes a little bit more interesting. We're sharing a story to someone else about our interpretation of the event. So you get to the office and say, hey, that rainstorm really ruined my morning. Or you say, oh, I have this hilarious story about the rainstorm this morning and what it did to my day. It says a lot about who you are as a person, the way you interpret and share that event to other people. So just to recap, we have a shared event with human expression or creation and the interpretation and telling of the event. The part that I really want to focus on today is that interpretation. So there's two filters that we as humans use when we're telling a story to other people. There's the structure of interpretation and then there's our, our identity. Our life is an ongoing series of events. As humans, we're selecting and choosing what events we want to share with people, how we're going to share them, and with whom exactly we're going to be sharing them. It's a very abstract art, and it really intrinsically ties to our identity. We're not only saying, here's what happened to me today, we're also saying, here's how I interpreted what happened to me today, and here's who I am as a result of the way I'm interpreting things. So going back to the concept of an abstract art, we're taking all these events that are passing us by in life, we're interpreting them through our identities, and then we're shaping them back out to other people so that they can hear our stories. What's interesting about storytelling is that you're not only telling a story, there's someone listening to your story. So as we're at these events, and we're telling people stories of what's been happening to us in our lives, they're listening to our stories through the exact same two filters from which we've been telling them. That it's through their structure of interpretation and their identity that they're hearing your story. What's so important about that is that when we're sharing stories, telling and listening, we're sending out messages about who we are, what we believe in, and how, that's a, how that builds success in our lives. Now, let me just get on focus. <laughs> um, so what is important about that is to understand how that's correlating to being on purpose. Is your story on purpose? Are you telling stories that are filtering in a way that are creating the results that you want? And are they being heard in a way that are getting you the results that you want? Take these huge corporations for an example. They spend time and money to invest in their leadership programs to train their leaders on storytelling. This is not only for market, it's for the internal culture of a corporation. Nike, for example, actually um, designates all of their executives as corporate storytellers. These people are in charge of not only conveying the vision and the mission of the company, they're also standing up to say, here's who we are as Nike, as a corporation, and this is what we believe in. Now, we all know that drives people to success. So let's think back to our own lives. Are you on purpose with your story? Are you sharing your vision and mission through the actions and words that you're using every day? And is that being heard in a way that helps you design the success that you want to create? There's two ways that your story's probably going. The river story or the rut story. Is your river flowing? Is it moving in ways that you want it to? Are your actions and words working for you? Or are you in a rut? You're stuck, nothing's moving, nothing's flowing, and you're not really sure why. Think about some of the most successful people that you know. They are um, filtering through a lens in a way that's working to make their stories on purpose. They take this art form very seriously. They're designing identities and they're creating stories that are working for them in the public eye. These people are so well versed in the art of storytelling that they've actually become story makers. They're the people we look to and say, we want some of that. And so at the end of this talk, I want to 
recap by saying that I've shared with you my interpretation of how stories are playing out in our own lives. And I'm hoping again that you walk away wanting to be a little bit more purposeful about the messages you're conveying and how that's designing success for you. Thank you.